Hi, welcome. I'm Sharla from Freezer Meals 101. Hi, I'm Gracelyn. I'm Sharla's daughter, and today we're making homemade baby food for my almost seven month old. We're really excited to do this because we've been talking, well, for many months about making homemade baby food and we just wanted him to have kind of the best of the best and you know how it is with your first by your third you're just feeding them like whatever and it doesn't matter if it's been on the floor or you know how it goes but it's her first so we're doing the homemade baby food and for those of you that watch our channel regularly you'll know that I usually do freezer meals with my neighbor Christy and even though Christy's not in today's video, she actually plays a really big part because she gave Grace a really special gift, mm -hmm. which was these cards that she made that have baby food recipes on them. And so we will come back and do another video in a few months when her son is older because Christy's got meals in there for like older babies and toddlers even. And so today we're just doing earlier baby foods, kind of six months to nine months. So that's what you're gonna see in this video. And we're using the recipes that she's given us and some of the tips. Each of these is two tablespoons. And most experts recommend that a baby this age, their serving size would be about a quarter cup. And of course, feed them more if they're hungry, less if they're not, but a quarter cup is kind of a good rule of thumb. And so two of these would be a quarter cup. So after these are frozen, we're going to be transferring them into freezer bags. We're gonna be sure to get all the air out of the freezer bag um, because air causes freezer burn. And we certainly don't need baby food with freezer burn. <laughs> that would taste gross. So we're going to be doing um, these in a freezer bag and then she can go ahead and take out two cubes to make a quarter cup serving. So that'll be really handy. Very handy and quick. Yes. So we're going to dive right in today. Uh, there is one recipe, well there's a few recipes we're making that are probably a little bit different than what you're used to for baby food. And there's one thing that we're doing that is, again, different um, than putting them in the cubes, but we'll get to that. So this first one that we're doing is peaches. And her son has tried peaches before, and so we know that they're gonna be a hit. And we are going to put because peaches aren't in season, we're gonna be using frozen peaches today. So we're gonna do three cups of frozen peaches and the recipe calls for a quarter cup of water, but a quarter cup just wasn't enough. It wasn't blending well. And so I had to add about a half a cup of water. I think it's because the peaches were frozen that that happened, but Either way, we just ran that through a blender and then transferred it into our ice cube tray. And since we knew that he likes peaches and we were honestly kind of excited to give the homemade baby food a try, so we couldn't help but scoop the rest of it just right directly into his bowl and Grace fed it to him and he was a fan. He really liked it. <laughs> he was making these like, so like smacking faces. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mouth smacking noises and uh, he was mm, pretty adorable. Making that mmm sound. Yes. <laughs> the mmm is always a good sign when you're feeding your baby. Then you know they're probably a fan of whatever it is you're making. Yeah. Are you making a face because it's cold or you like it? A lot of lip smacking. I think we like it. Since today is baby food day, before I even started making the peaches, I went ahead and put two sweet potatoes in the oven. Uh, what I do for that is I put the oven to 350 degrees. I put some foil down in the bottom of the oven. Just put the sweet potatoes directly on the rack. And depending on the size of the sweet potato, you know, they might take a little bit longer, but they take about an hour in there to get nice and soft. And then 
We're gonna let that cool and mash it up and throw that in the blender with a little bit of water. And then we will have sweet potato food for him. So we're well on our way. This next one is a little bit different. And what we're gonna be doing is freezing cubes or slices of banana. We're gonna freeze them flat on a cookie sheet. When they're totally frozen, we're gonna transfer them into a freezer bag, get the air out and freeze it. That way these can be cooked up, or not cooked up, but these <laughs> can be made fresh because you'll just throw some cubes into a magic bullet or blender and make your fresh banana baby food. Now I'm allergic to bananas. I know I have those weird allergies. So but I'll be cutting them and placing on the sheet today. Yes. Last time I cut up a banana. I truly like bananas, so it's kind of hard to like this one. Makes me want to make like chocolate dipped. Oh yeah. Bananas or like yogurt dipped bananas. Wait, it's just oh, like peanut butter dip. It's like <laughs> all the dip bananas. sure that you you're using unblemished bananas you don't want to use your like overripe black bananas for this you want to use those nice ripe perfect bananas and these can freeze for six months <laughs> you can hear the baby laughing in the background that's why we're kind of laughing anyway <laughs> he is with my husband and um, having a great morning so it's, it's all good time. <laughs> So there's a few things when you're doing baby food that you can't freeze. So for those, you'd wanna make them fresh and keep them in the fridge just for a few days. Those are kiwi, cucumber, and avocado or baby guacamole. So those ones you'll wanna make up fresh either on the day of or just the day before. The avocado or guacamole, of course, that's gonna go brown, change color, and so you probably just wanna make that up right before you serve it. Now, if you don't have ice cube trays or if you run out, like we probably will today because we're making so much baby food, then what you can do is you can put parchment paper down on a cookie sheet and just plop, you know, two tablespoon, spoon, I don't know, clumps. <laughs> what are we going to call them? Clumps. It'll work. A little less pretty, but it'll work. Yeah, exactly. They won't look quite as uniform or nice, but they'll still, it, it still functions, right? It's still your approximately two tablespoons per cube and, or clump. <laughs> <laughs> what did I write on here? Um, oh, mounds. <laughs> mounds to I wrote in my notes mounds. So mounds sounds a little bit more appetizing than clumps. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> anyway, so let's get to the next baby food recipe. So we're doing carrots, but we're doing it sort of in the hopes that he changes his mind about carrots. He had a few days ago, hated it. I wasn't here for it, but I heard he, he hated it totally not a fan and carrots are a little bit of a stronger taste than some of the fruits or the milder vegetables and so i'm hoping that as he gets older he'll develop more of a taste for carrots <laughs> if he's anything like his mom he won't ever eat them but he's already got way better of a palate than she does that's very true he's willing to eat fruit <laughs> Which, other than bananas, she's never been willing to eat, even as a baby. I like apples. Oh, that's true. You coconut. didn't for the longest time. Oh, yes, that, coconut. I think that's it. That is all. No berries. Don't get near her with a berry. No. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> when it comes to picky kids, I... You scored a lot. I did. I have several. Anyway, it's really funny too because one of my other daughters is 
semi-vegetarian and she's like a massive carnivore so trying to we're make everyone opposites. happy is yeah mm -hmm. so we're gonna try the carrots we'll see what happens we're going to <laughs> <laughs> no i am more of an optimist today you're usually the optimist we're gonna do two cups of carrots now you could double this in our case because we don't think he's gonna like them we're not gonna double this no. but you're gonna do two cups of carrots that are peeled and chopped and a cup of water. We're gonna bring the carrots and water to a boil in a stovetop pot. And then we're gonna simmer it for about 15 minutes until they're super tender. We're gonna let that cool and then we're gonna transfer it into the blender once they're cooled and puree on high until it reaches the consistency that you're wanting. With younger babies, you're going to want more of a puree. With older babies, it's okay to have it be a little bit chunkier. So you can gauge that based on the age of your baby and how they do with different textures. This will make about two cups, so maybe we should actually half it and do like one cup of carrots and half a cup of water. Mm -hmm. Maybe we'll do that. <laughs> anyway, that's our carrots. always make more if he magically likes it. Exactly. <laughs> then we're going to do some blueberries. That's super simple. We're just going to add some fresh blueberries. You could use frozen if you needed to. Um, and then we're going to add some water. So two cups of blueberries to half a cup of water. And we're going to boil those on a, in a stovetop pot. And we're going to um, simmer it wait until the berries are tender, let them cool, transfer those to the blender and puree on high until smooth. If your baby does not do well with textures, you can push this one through a sieve to remove any seeds that might be in there that your baby might find challenging. With our beets, I'm hoping that he likes beets because his grandma really likes beets and beets are healthy. But a note about beets, when your baby is eating a lot of beets, it can change the color of their pee. So if you see red in their diaper, do not be alarmed. Don't freak out. <laughs> Very good. I wouldn't be freaked out. No, you'd just be like, mom. <laughs> Beats. It's the beats, you know. So we're just going to, um, we actually have a lot of beats because Christy had some that she got um, from like a food co-op thing that she was doing in the summer. And so she found them when she was cleaning out her fridge and, they're, and she's like, they're still good. So do you want them? And I was like, I already bought some for the baby food, but we'll just make a lot of beets. So we're going to have a lot of beets. Hopefully he likes them. And the the main recipe is two cups of chopped peeled beets, half a cup of water. We're going to cook those in a stove top, um, bring them to a boil, simmer until they're tender. This one's going to take a little bit longer, um, at least 20 minutes, depending on the size that you made the beets. Allow it to cool and then you're going to run those through your blender or magic bullet. Um, and transfer them into your um, ice cube tray, freeze them, and then transfer them into the freezer bag. For apples, I forgot to mention that the blueberry one on there, Christy noted that that one mixes really well with other fruits like your apple sauces, your apricots, all of that. So he might like kind of a blend. I think you can go for a blend sometime, yeah or any of the fruit ones you could also mix into the pablum and that's always a nice little treat, right? He's gonna love that one. I think so. So he, apples. he is a fan. He's a very big fan. So for the apples, we're just going to do four cups of peeled chopped apples, of course, that are seeded and then half a cup of water. We're going to, um, Bring that to a simmer in a medium saucepan. You're gonna stir them here and there until they're tender. 
transfer that to the blender and puree on high until smooth. And then again, you're going to make that into baby food in your ice cube trays and transfer it to a freezer bag. For the squash, I bought some butternut squash. You could do this with acorn squash or butternut squash. Um, you're just going to peel it, cube it, and three cups of squash to one cup of water. Bring that to a boil, reduce the heat to simmer, and cook it for about 20 minutes. Transfer that once it's cool to a blender. Process that through the blender, puree it, and then you have your baby food. Now, Christy's added a tip onto this one. She says, quarter your squash lengthwise because the ridges make it hard to peel, especially acorn squash. Hmm. Seed it and steam it for 20 to 25 minutes. Scoop the innards out from the rind. One squash makes about four and a half cups, so be prepared to make lots. Now for this one, this one's kind of like a fun, exciting recipe, and it is rhubarb, apples, and berries. Mm -hmm. We already have rhubarb in our freezer because we actually have a video, what, right there? <laughs> about um, how to freeze rhubarb. And Christy and I both grow rhubarb in our gardens, and I really like it for muffins or baking smoothies even, so it's great having it in the freezer. So we're gonna use frozen rhubarb, rhubarb for this recipe, and then some apples, and I happen to have some frozen raspberries right now as well. You could also use blueberries instead of the raspberries. Then we're gonna add in a little bit of apple juice. So this is the only recipe that uses something other than water for your liquid. And again, we're just going to bring that to a simmer in a medium pot. And once it's all nice and soft, we're gonna let it cool, transfer it to a blender and puree. Nice. That one will be fun. And it says that he can have it from six months on. So you could have it now, even though it's a blend. You might have been like a little taste of all these right after. <laughs> like one, one little <laughs> totally. like taste test of each one. We're a little bit careful with him because his mom's got some severe allergies. So we like to kind of do one food at a time, but he's at the point where he's been on solids for more than a month now. And he's a big foodie. He loves like any food you bring out, he wants to taste. Yes. And he's tried a lot of different foods now, so we can be a little bit more giving. Yes. Because, you know, when kids are prone to allergies, you kind of want to do one food at a time so that if they do have a reaction, you can narrow down what food it was. And so for him, that's kind of the route that we've taken. Seems we're doing really well, though. Yeah, he, so far, um, he's got really, really bad eczema, which is sad, and he's always itchy, and mm -hmm. we, she has to work really hard on the eczema. That was a given. Yes. That was a given for him. <laughs> Both parents have it, so. You know, he was he was gonna have bad skin. It's just <laughs> it just was one of those things. Yeah. Um, but at least so far, no allergies. No, nope. we're thankful for that. Okay, and the last thing that we are going to make for this little guy, who is going to be the best fed baby, it's chonker. at least in our subdivision. <laughs> <laughs> and this kid, like, it's a good thing we're feeding him well because. He is a mover. Mm -hmm. He's six months, almost seven months, but he is sitting fully unassisted. He is crawling like run crawling, like around the house crawling room to room. And he's pulling himself up on furniture and trying to stand unassisted. So we are in trouble. She walked at eight months. So we wouldn't be surprised if he walks a month from now. Mm -hmm. So we're child proofing and... <laughs> the other day I was with another like young mom and her kids and she has an eight month old and him and Milo were hitting it off. He doesn't even sit up. He just like scoots on the floor. Milo's crawling and like everything. I'm just like, wow. He's definitely <laughs> very advanced for his size. <laughs> he is, he is always wanting to do the next thing. Which is... Can't just do the one thing. It has to go farther. Came from somewhere. From me. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
<laughs> okay, this last one is pairs. So we're just going to take about four pears. I don't remember if I bought four or five, but however many I bought, we're gonna cook that with a, a half a cup of water. Um, we're going to bring that to a simmer over the stove top until they're tender, so about 20 minutes. We're gonna allow that to cool and then again, transfer it to the blender and puree it until it's smooth. And then we're going to um, put them into the trays, put the trays in the freezer until we're ready to pop them out and transfer them to a freezer bag. Now it's really, really important. I know I said it at the beginning, but you need to get the air out of that freezer bag. So every time you go to take cubes out, you have to remember to again, remove that excess air so that you don't get freezer burn. These will last in your freezer for months as long as you're really diligent about taking the air out. So that's just a really good tip. I learned a new technique. You can use like a straw and they close over the straw and then suck out the air with the straw and they can get all the air out. That works too than just squeezing the air out. Totally works. This was a super different video than we usually do. If you're new to Freezer Meals 101, welcome. We teach you how to fill your freezer and get it stacked so that you can relax. And we're gonna put a video right there of some freezer meals you can make before your baby is born so that you are set because we made me meals before Milo was born and she was able to not have to worry so much about dinner after that, which was awesome. So easy, you could just take it out in the morning, throw it in in like the afternoon, it was ready when, um, when Milo's dad came home from work and it was just like super stress-free. So thank you for joining us today and we wish you luck on your baby food journey. Happy cooking.